In today's video, we are going to explore famous Bruce Lee's striking thoughts and quotes about fight, martial art, and winning. Let's get started. A fight is not won by one punch or kick. Either learn to endure or hire a bodyguard. A good fighter must sense rather than perceive his chance to strike. A good martial artist does not become tense, but ready. Not thinking, yet not dreaming. Ready for whatever may come. When the opponent expands, I contract, and when he contracts, I expand. And when there is an opportunity, I do not hit, it hits all by itself. A good teacher can never be fixed in a routine, each moment requires a sensitive mind that is constantly changing and constantly adapting. A teacher must never impose this student to fit his favorite pattern. A good teacher functions as a pointer, exposing his student's vulnerability and causing him to explore both internally and finally integrating himself with his being. Martial art should not be passed out indiscriminately. A good teacher protects his pupils from his own influence. A kung fu man lives without being dependent on the opinions of others, and a master, unlike the beginner, holds himself in reserve. He is quiet and unassuming, with no desire to show off. A kung fu man who was really good was not proud at all. Pride emphasizes the superiority of one's status. There has to be fear and insecurity in pride, because when you aim at being highly esteemed and achieve such status, you automatically start to worry about losing status. Jeet Kune Do does not beat around the bush. It does not take winding detours. It follows a straight line to the objective. Jeet Kin Do favors formlessness so that it can assume all forms and since Jeet Kin Do has no style, it can fit in with all styles. As a result, Jeet Kin Do utilizes all ways and is bound by none and, likewise, uses any techniques which serve its end. Jeet Kin Do, it's just a name, don't fuss over it. There's no such thing as a style if you understand the roots of combat. To learn to die is to be liberated from it. So when tomorrow comes you must free your ambitious mind and learn the art of dying. Like the cobra, you remain coiled in a loose but compact position and your strike should be felt before it is seen. Martial arts, like any art, is an unrestricted athletic expression of an individual soul. Moving, be like water. Still, be like a mirror. Respond like an echo. My strength comes from my abdomen. It's the center of gravity and the source of real power. My style? You can call it the art of fighting without fighting. Never take your eyes off your opponent, even when you bow. One should be in harmony with, not in opposition to, the strength and force of the opposition. This means that one should do nothing that is not natural or spontaneous. The important thing is not to strain in any way. Remember, you are expressing the techniques and not doing the techniques. Since weight training involves repetitions, a great deal of energy must be exerted. Therefore, weight training should be practiced only every other day. The abdominal and waist region coordinate all parts of the body and act as the center or generator. Therefore, you can promote the ability to control the body's action and master your will more easily. The aim of art is to project an inner vision into the world, to state in aesthetic creation the deepest psychic and personal experiences of a human being. 
It is to enable those experiences to be intelligible and generally recognized within the total framework of an ideal world. The athlete who is building muscles the weight training should be very sure to work adequately on speed and flexibility at the same time. In combat, without the prior attributes, a strong man will be like the bull with its colossal strength, futilely pursuing the matador or like a low-geared truck chasing a rabbit. The best fighter is not a boxer, karate, or judo man. The best fighter is someone who can adapt on any style. He kicks too good for a boxer, throws too good for a karate man, and punches too good for a judo man. The best form of endurance exercise is the performance of the event. The essence of fighting is the art of moving at the right time. The founder of any branch must be more ingenious than the common man. However, if his achievement is not carried on by disciples of the same ingenuity, then things will only become formalized and get stuck in a cul-de-sac, whereby breakthrough and progress will be almost impossible. The highest art is no art. The best form is no form. The highest technique is to have no technique. My technique is a result of your technique. My movement is a result of your movement. The martial arts are based upon understanding, hard work, and a total comprehension of skills. Power training and the use of force are easy, but total comprehension of all of the skills of the martial arts is very difficult to achieve. The martial arts are ultimately self-knowledge. A punch or a kick is not to knock the hell out of the guy in front, but to knock the hell out of your ego, your fear, or your hang-ups. The more complicated and restricted the method, the less opportunity for expression of one's original sense of freedom. The more relaxed the muscles are, the more energy can flow through the body. Using muscular tensions to try to do the punch or attempting to use brute force to knock someone over will only work to opposite effect. A man must constantly exceed his level. A man strikes you, make him bleed. He makes you bleed, you break his bones. He breaks your bones, kill him. Being hit is inevitable. Strike back twice as hard. A martial artist has to take responsibility for himself and accept the consequences of his own doing. A quality martial artist is always ready for any move and trains oneself invincible. All martial art is simply an honest expression of one's body with a lot of deception in between. I hope martial artists are more interested in the root of martial arts and not the different decorative branches, flowers, or leaves. It is futile to argue as to which leaf, which design of branches, or which attractive flower you like. When you understand the root, you understand all its blossoming. If mere mechanical efficiency can make everyone a martial artist, then all is well. Unfortunately, combat, like freedom, is something that cannot be preconceived. The principle of martial arts is not a thing that can be learned, like a science, by fact-finding and instruction in facts. It has to grow spontaneously, like a flower, in a mind free from emotions and desires. To be bound by traditional martial arts style or styles is the way of the mindless, enslaved martial artist. But to be inspired by the traditional martial art and to achieve further heights is the way of genius. To me, the extraordinary aspect of martial arts lies in its simplicity. The easy way is also the right way, and martial art is nothing at all special. The closer to the true way of martial arts, the less wastage of expression there is. To me, 
Ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do. It has always been very easy for me to put on a show and be cocky, and be flooded with a cocky feeling and feel pretty cool and all that. I can make all kinds of phony things. Blinded by it. Or I can show some really fancy movement. But to experience oneself honestly, not lying to oneself, and to express myself honestly, now that is very hard to do. Unfortunately, now in boxing people are only allowed to punch. In judo, people are only allowed to throw. I do not despise these kinds of martial arts. What I mean is, we now find rigid forms which create differences among clans, and the world of martial art is shattered as a result. Use karate, judo, aikido, or any style to build your counteroffensive. It will be interesting. Use only that which works, and take it from any place you can find it. Using no way as a way, having no limitation as limitation. Where there is no style, there is no slave. Martial arts mean honestly expressing yourself. No style. No slave. I personally do not believe in the word style. Why? Because, unless there are human beings with three arms and four legs, unless we have another group of beings on earth that are structurally different from us, there can be no different style of fighting. Why is that? Because we have two hands and two legs. Because of styles, people are separated. They are not united together because styles become law. When you're talking about fighting, as it is, with no rules, well then, maybe you'd better train every part of your body. Art calls for complete mastery of techniques, developed by reflection within the soul. Art is never decoration, embellishment, instead, it is work of enlightenment. Art, in other words, is a technique for acquiring liberty. Art is the way to the absolute and to the essence of human life. The aim of art is not the one-sided promotion of spirit, soul and senses, but the opening of all human capacities, thought, feeling, will, to the life rhythm of the world of nature. So will the voiceless voice be heard and the self be brought into harmony with it? Art lives where absolute freedom is, because where it is not, there can be no creativity. Art reaches its greatest peak when devoid of self-consciousness. Freedom discovers man the moment he loses concern over what impression he is making or about to make. Art requires imagination. It requires creativity. Creativity requires experience and experience comes from your life. And your life is expressed in your art. Research your own experience, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, add what is essentially your own. Because one does not want to be disturbed, to be made uncertain, he establishes a pattern of conduct, of thought, a pattern of relationships to man. He then becomes a slave to the pattern and takes the pattern to be the real thing. Before I studied the art, a punch to me was just like a punch, a kick just like a kick. After I learned the art, a punch was no longer a punch, a kick no longer a kick. Now that I've understood the art, a punch is just like a punch, a kick just like a kick. The height of cultivation is really nothing special. It is merely simplicity, the ability to express the utmost with the minimum. Any technique, however worthy and desirable, 
becomes a disease when the mind is obsessed with it. As long as I can remember I feel I have had this great creative and spiritual force within me that is greater than faith, greater than ambition, greater than confidence, greater than determination, greater than vision. It is all these combined. My brain becomes magnetized with this dominating force which I hold in my hand. Boards don't hit back. Bring the mind to a sharp focus and make it alert so that it can immediately intuit truth, which is everywhere. Defense is attack, attack is defense, each being the cause and result of the other. Ever since I was a child I have had this instinctive urge for expansion and growth. To me, the function and duty of a quality human being is the sincere and honest development of one's potential. I refer to my hands, feet and body as the tools of the trade. The hands and feet must be sharpened and improved daily to be efficient. I treasure the memory of the past misfortunes. It has added more to my bank of fortitude. If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. But if I tell you I'm not good, you'll know I'm lying. In combat, spontaneity rules, rote performance of technique perishes. It is the man that has nothing to lose or is willing to lose everything to beat you that I am afraid of. If a man is willing to lose his life to bite off my nose then I don't care how good I am or what I do to him he's gonna get my nose. The second-hand artist blindly following his sensei or sifu accepts his pattern. As a result, his action is and, more importantly, his thinking become mechanical. His responses become automatic, according to set patterns, making him narrow and limited. There is no mystery about my style. My movements are simple, direct, and non-classical. The extraordinary part of it lies in its simplicity. Every movement in Jeet Kune Do is being so of itself. There is nothing artificial about it. I always believe that the easy way is the right way. There's only one basic principle of self-defense you must apply the most effective weapon, as soon as possible, to the most vulnerable target. Though methods play an important role in the early stage, the technique should not be too mechanical, complex or restrictive. If we cling blindly to them, we shall eventually become bound by their limitations. Remember, you are expressing the techniques and not doing the techniques. If somebody attacks you, your response is not technique number one, stance number two, section four, paragraph five. Instead you simply move in like sound in echo, without any deliberation. It is as though when I call you, you answer me, or when I throw you something, you catch it. It's as simple as that, no fuss, no mess. To reach me, you must move to me. Your attack offers me an opportunity to intercept you. To see is to be deceived. To hear is to be lied to. To feel is to believe. Too much horsing around with unrealistic stances and classic forms and rituals is just too artificial and mechanical, and doesn't really prepare the student for actual combat. A guy could get clobbered while getting into this classical mess. Classical methods like these, which I consider a form of paralysis, only solidify and constrain what was once fluid. Their practitioners are merely blindly rehearsing routines and stunts that will lead nowhere. Training for strength and flexibility is a must. You must use it to support your techniques. 
Techniques alone are no good if you don't support them with strength and flexibility. Training is one of the most neglected phases of athletics. Too much time is given to the development of skill and too little to the development of the individual for participation. True observation begins when devoid of set patterns, freedom of expression occurs when one is beyond system. True refinement seeks simplicity. True thusness is the substance of thought, and thought is the function of true thusness. There is no thought except that of true thusness. Thusness does not move, but its motion and function are inexhaustible. Truth cannot be structured or confined. You and your opponent are one. There is a coexisting relationship between you. You coexist with your opponent and become his complement, absorbing his attack and using his force to overcome him. Please let us know your favorite quotes from these famous Bruce Lee's striking thoughts and quotes about fight, martial art and winning in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel.